When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. Welcome to the first video of the indicators chapter. In this chapter, we're going to talk a lot about indicators and what they're used for and what exactly they do as well. And the first stop point is all about common substances and how we can classify them as either acidic, basic, or neutral. And indicators help us to do that. So I'll read the actual stop point. It says, classify common substances as acidic, basic, or neutral. So that's the stop point. And before we start to talk about the different uh, ways where we can classify it, I want to make sure we go over the pH scale and what exactly an acid and base or, or a neutral substance is before we start to classify. So you might have seen this. This is the pH scale. You should have seen this before. And it goes from 0 to 14. Now what do these numbers actually mean? So when it comes to pH scale, there's two parts to the word pH, or the um, letters P and H. There's P and there's H. P in this case actually stands for log. So that P stands for log. And the H actually stands for hydrogen ions. So what we're doing is we're actually taking the log of the concentration of hydrogen ions. I'm not going to go over this in much detail because you will do that probably in university level. You don't have to do that for your HSC level yet. But what that actually means is if you have the pH of 1, for example, what that means is that your hydrogen concentration of something which has a pH of 1 is 1 times 10 to the power of minus 1, this power of minus 1. But then we take the log of it and we turn it from minus 1 into positive 1, so 1. So the pH of 1, so this is pH of 1, is something that has a hydrogen concentration of 1 times 10 to the power of minus 1. Now if something has the pH of 14, what that means is the hydrogen concentration is actually 1 times 10 to the power of minus 14. That gives us the pH 14. So anything that has a pH of 14 actually has a hydrogen concentration of minus 14. Now this actually means that something that has a concentration of minus 14 has a lot smaller concentration than something that has a concentration of minus 1. So even though if you look at the pH scale, you might think that something that has a pH 1 has less of these hydrogen ions, it actually has much more because we're not taking, we're not talking about numbers from 1 to 14, we're talking about in reality numbers of minus 1 to 14. And minus 1 just means 0 0.1, whereas minus 14 is 0 with 13 zeros between that and the 1. So 0 0.0000 to 1. So this is a much smaller hydrogen concentration than the minus 1. So for that scale, you need to know that anything that has a pH of 0 to about 7, just before 7, 0 to 6-ish, 6 6.5-ish, this will be considered acidic. In that 7 range, so 7 is considered neutral, and above 7 to 14 would be considered basic, or another word for that is alkaline. I'll quickly go over what these, actually, these words actually mean, uh, but you should also know that, obviously, Something that has acidic has high amounts of these hydrogen ions, these H pluses, and something that is basic has lower amounts. So high for acidic, that makes it acidic, these hydrogen ions, and for basic, we just said that minus 14 has a very low concentration, and that's the pH of 14 has minus 14 of these. So low concentration for anything that is basic. All right, so I'll go over the properties of acids, bases, and neutral substances before I talk about what they actually are in our common household. So first of all, you should know that acids, they usually taste sour. So for example, your lemon juice and the like, they taste sour and that's because they're acidic. Also, they sting or they burn when they come in contact with the skin. That's not a property of acids. Now they conduct electricity, but only when in solution. So in solution in water, they will conduct electricity. This is for acids. And one of the actual indicators, so blue litmus paper, that's an indicator. And if you put an acid into blue litmus paper, it turns red. It turns the blue litmus paper red. That's another property. And as I mentioned earlier, it releases these hydrogen ions when it comes into solution. So when you put it into water, 
these hydrogen ions will, will be released. An example is if you put a hydrochloric acid, which is obviously an acid, put that in water, we have these hydrogen ions being released and the chloride ions. But this here is what makes it acidic. Now, neutral substances, they have no sour taste, they have a neutral taste. They have no real harmful effect. Bases and acids do, but these do not. It does not conduct electricity. So acids do, but neutral substances do not conduct electricity. And it does not change the color of litmus paper. So litmus paper will stay red, litmus paper will stay red, and blue litmus paper will stay blue. Now the bases, they taste bitter. So bitter tasting things, for example, your toothpaste is a base, it tastes bitter. It has a soapy feel to it. So all your soaps are generally bases. And when you, for example, get that soap in your eyes, shampoo, for example, you can you always can tell that it irritates your eyes. And that's because that base actually irritates your eyes. So soapy, it has a soapy feel. And these bases, they can irritate eyes and other parts if they get in contact with them. It also conducts electricity, just like acids do. And it turns red litmus paper to blue. Whereas for acids, it was turns blue litmus paper to red. Now these actually release something called a hydrogen a hydroxide ion, these ones. And I'll go over that much more detail in the future videos. But when we put these in solution, they release these hydroxide ions, whereas acids release the, the um, hydrogen ions. And when it comes to the example, we have sodium hydroxide here, this one. We put that solution, we have sodium ions, but we also have these hydroxide ions. And this is what makes it basic. That's a quick summary of the properties of acids and bases. I'll quickly show you a simulation of different substances and how they actually turn and um, they change the pH when they come into contact with solution. So here is the simulation. What you can see here, now we have water at the moment. This water is 7.0. And the concentration of these OHs, the hydroxide ions, and these H3O pluses. This is just another way of looking at hydroxide. So this is hyd um, hydrogen. This is hydrogen. And this is hydroxide. And in water, because it's neutral, it has a similar ratio, the same ratio. Both of these are exactly the same. Whereas if we put it, if we lower the pH, the water has a pH of 7, they're both the same. You can see it here as well. They have both the same amount. Whereas if we go, for example, blood, which is slightly more basic, you can see the number of blue to red has changed. There's more blue than red. That's because it's slightly basic. And blue were these hydroxide ions. Now if we go from blood to hand soap, you can see again that ratio is even higher, so much more blue than red in this case. That's because the pH is even higher. And then the highest in this case is the drain cleaners. And that has, again, a huge ratio of blue to, to red. So the blue, much more blue than red, because there's much more hydroxide ions than um, hydrogen ions. Now when it comes to, we'll go back to water and then it'll show the reverse. So if we make it a bit more acidic, so for example, milk has, has a, a pH of 6.5. We can see we have slightly more of the red, so the hydrogen ions, compared to the hydroxide ions. If we move to beer, which is also, funny enough, is also acidic, we see we have more, quite a few more red than the blues. And then if we go to vomit, which is because vomit comes from our stomach, which means it's really acidic, so vomit has a pH of 2. And now there's even more red than blue. So the lower pH you have, the more hydrogen you have compared to your hydroxide ions. So that was just a couple of substances, but now we're going to go over the dot point. It says, classify common substances as acids, bases, or neutral substances. So for example, white vinegar is acetic acid in it. So white vinegar has acetic acid in it, so we use white vinegar to cook. So white vinegar is a acid, because it has acetic acid in it. Soda water is also acidic substance. And that's what we have to do for this dot point. We have to classify common substances. So these are household substances. We have to classify them as either bases, neutral, or acidic solutions. Soil water also has an acid in it, therefore it's acidic. Lemon juice has citric acid in it, thereby making it also a acid. It has a pH of around about 2 to 3. Aspirin is also an acid. Vitamin C has ascorbic acid in it. So all of these different uh, things, so lemons, limes, they all have ascorbic acid, which actually makes vitamin C acidic as well. And it's often why these, li these limes have that really sour taste because of vitamin C. And car battery or lead acid batteries 
are also really acidic. They actually have really low pH. Um, so these were common household uh, equipment or substances and the fact that they're acids. In a couple of the examples, we gave why they're acids. So for example, white vinegar has acetic acid, lemon juice has citric acid, and vitamin C has ascorbic acid in it. So this is actually structure of acetic acid right there. And if you remember ethylene and ethanol, this has a very similar structure to ethanol. So the only difference is that ethanol has a hydrogen here instead of its OH, O double O group. And we actually, if that's why if we have ethanol or alcohol, which is, which is ethanol, if we have, if we leave that for lying around for too long, it will actually turn into vinegar. And the reason why is because it will just swap one of these H's for a double O, this group here, and become acetic acid. So that's why we should make sure we don't um, let our alcohol stand around for too long, because it will actually turn into vinegar. And that's the reason why. So a couple of neutral substances. We've got stuff like water has that same ratio of hydrogen to hydroxide. Same with salt solution, same ratio of hydrogen to, to hydroxide. Sugar, um, sugar solution as well same ratio, and pure alcohol. So these were some of the common substances that are neutral in our household. Some of the basic ones are ones like ammonia. Ammonia is actually has is NH3. That's very basic. And when you put that in solution, they make, make hydroxide ions, these OH- ones, and that makes it basic. Ammonia has a pH of around about 12. Washing soda is sodium carbonate, and that formula is NaCO3. Three. And anything with carbonate is often a base. So sodium carbonate, so washing soda, all these different washing products we have here, these washing products, are most of them are basic. Baking soda, so the things we use to make bread, is also a base. Lime water, this is not lime as in um, lemon lime, like the sour one, but actually this kind of lime. And that's used to make mortar. So that's, don't confuse lime water with like lemon lime. That's also basic, has a quite low pH. Drain cleaners, that was an example that over the animation we also had drain cleaners. They have sodium hydroxide, so a NaOH, and that OH is removed when it's in solution, makes it very basic. And even an acid tablets are bases as well. So these are some of the actual substances. So for this dot point, you should know what a base is, what an acid is. So that roughly the, the features they have, so sour, bitter, all that stuff. And you should know some of these common substances and if they're classified as either acids, bases, or neutral substances. Hopefully that was useful. Thank you for watching.